I'm going to open up the integrated terminal inside of our editor. And that can be done with control backtick on a Mac. And I'm going to state Ionic generates page edit shopping item. As you can see, we've generated a page named edit shopping item. Let's follow the procedure to add this to our application. If necessary, remove the Ionic page decorator. If you don't want to use lazy loading. And then inside of our app module.ts, we can import from pages slash edit shopping item, edit shopping item, and then import the edit shopping item page. We can add the page to our declarations. And we can also add our page to our entry components. Now inside of our edit shopping item page, I want to also explore how we can get access to the data inside of our Angular Fire database inside of our TypeScript file. There may be times where you want to mutate the data and you don't necessarily want to display it with the async pipe. Although you could then make a custom component and pass it into that component. Let's take a look how we can do it inside of this page. As always, to use Angular Fire, we will need to import from Angular Fire 2 slash database the Angular Fire database. In this circumstance, to deal with the object only, we can look at the Firebase object observable. So instead of importing the list observable, now let's import the object observable. And this time we can say that our shopping item reference, because we're no longer looking at the list, can be of type Firebase object observable. And this one will need a type. So in order to use the type, we can say that we want to import from our models slash shopping item slash shopping item dot interface. So we're now essentially saying that this is a shopping item reference, which is a Firebase object observable of type shopping item. We can then inject our database by saying private database of type Angular Fire database. And we can set the reference of our shopping item by saying this dot shopping item reference dollar is equal to the database. But this time, instead of list, we can point it at the object. And we can say shopping dash list. But at this point, we don't want the entire database. We don't want the entire node for shopping list. Instead, we want a particular ID. So how might we pass the ID to this page? Well, that comes by saying slash, and don't forget, we are using the back ticks at this point. And for now, I'm just going to simply use a placeholder variable, which I'm going to call shopping item ID. And the way that we're going to get that is via the nav parameters. So we're going to say capture the shopping item ID as a nav parameter. And we can make a const shopping item ID, and that will be equal to this dot nav params dot get. And then of course, we can pass in that shopping item ID. But at the moment, we're not passing any sort of ID across to this page. So that means we need to head back over to our shopping list. And inside of our select shopping item function, where we have edit, we are to send the user to the edit shopping item page and pass the key as a parameter. So do you remember how we get the key for our shopping item? Well, we get the key by accessing the dot dollar key on our shopping item. And that's because each item inside of our Firebase database has a dollar key. And that's how we reference the particular ID. So we can say this 
.navcontrol.push. And now we need to push the user to the edit shopping item page. But in order to do that, we need a reference. So let's head up to the import section of our shopping list page. And what we need to do is import the edit shopping item page. And that comes from edit shopping item slash edit shopping item. So as you can see, we now have a reference to that page. We can use that inside of our nav controller and we can set this .navcontrol.push. We can pass in the edit shopping item page. And then if we add a comma here, you'll see that we can pass through any parameters. So these parameters can be passed as an object. So we'll make the key for our object equal to shopping item ID and the value equal to the shopping item dot key. So now our nav stack looks like this. At the moment, we would be on the shopping list page, but we'd be navigating the user to the edit shopping item page. But not only that, we'd also be passing through a parameter of shopping item ID with the ID of whatever the selected item was. So for example, if the selected item was cheesecake, then the ID would be this ID here. This would then allow us to reference that particular element only inside of our edit shopping item page. If we head over to our edit shopping item page, where we're capturing the ID, we can then log this out to the console by console.log shopping item ID. So we can log out the nav param. So for example, if we select cheesecake and hit edit, we're navigated to the edit shopping item page and there is the ID for our cheesecake. In the next lecture, let's take a look at how we can create ourselves a template and perform some updates to this object.